In today's weekly analysis, guys, we're going to go through five different pairs, Aussie CAD, Aussie Swiss Franc, Aussie JPY, New Zealand Dollar CAD, and USD ZAR. Not only are we going to do analysis, but we're also going to highlight an important concept. We're going to show you guys how to use structure to isolate your chart patterns. Now let's get into things guys we're gonna start off with aussie cad and on aussie cad we'll start off on the daily guys so what we can see from a daily perspective guys is a market that has created some structure on our left hand side found support at this area we've seen buyers come in and violate previous higher structure now if we isolate this smaller structure so we are looking at this identifying that as our impulsive move that has violated previous resistance areas and we are seeing this as our corrective structure towards our higher time frame support so looking at this corrective structure that comes down towards support what we can see is that this is a multi-touch structure so we do have our first touch second touch there and we are currently at the first at the third touch of this structure so what we can see from a daily perspective is that we already have a nice bullish engulfing candlestick from our higher time frame support structure what we can also see is nice weak rejections from last week friday now let's jump down onto our h4 and we'll begin to start isolating our structure now what we can see on aussie cad on h4 is this market that has decelerated towards our support area and then we are seeing a move to the upside able to violate previous resistance areas showing us our sign of support and also violating this resistance trend line though if we isolate this structure over here we can see that this is a corrective break of structure if we go further to isolate that corrective structure as well what you will see is that we had an ascending structure so we had isolated this ascending structure over here resistance trend line there support trend line there and we do see an ascending structure we understood the likelihood of this ascending structure would be to break to the downside now what we're doing here is we are isolating our structure because we have already identified higher time frame support higher time frame descending structure higher time frame three touch structure as well we're at the third touch of our high time frame descending structure we know that we should be looking for those buying opportunities now what we've done is we've isolated our structure what we've done is we've taken into our account we see equal lows being formed here we see highs lows highs lower lows lower highs lower lows and then obviously now we have potential lower highs so isolating the major structure within this area we do see major support there and major support here now that we have two support trend lines we are able to draw our support trend line at our, at our resistance we have one resistance up there another resistance up there two resistance areas so we're able to draw our resistance trend line what we do see is a nice descending structure descending to where to our higher time frame support area which we will be looking for buying opportunities from so what we're going to do on aussie cad guys is we're going to wait for structure to deliver us bullish bias price action what we could wait for is because we have this two touch structure we could wait for that third touch that will be within our support structure where we will wait for the market to give us those buying opportunities we're going to be waiting for markets to come down into this area give us that impulsive move to the upside and then give us a reason to enter this position whether this reason comes in the form of a continuation structure like we just discussed or our entry comes in the form of a beautiful reversal structure nonetheless we will be looking for structures that align with the bias that we've set from our higher time frame structures now that's our outlook for aussie cat guys over the course of next week we're going to be looking for those bullish bias setups let's go on to the next pair guys we'll go on to aussie swiss franc 
and for Aussie Swiss Frank, we'll start off on the daily as well. What we can see, guys, from a daily perspective is previous resistance structures. What we will see is if, if we look at the major structure, we have resistance, we have support, we see prices pushing to the upside. Now, what we've done so that we can basically refine our levels of structure, we've identified our previous, previous, previous bearish order block or bullish order block, sorry, that has not been mitigated yet. So we haven't seen prices tapping in this zone of this last bullish order block. We've used that as a reference to refine structure because if we do take this resistance area up here, what we will see is obviously prices correcting below structure we'll see prices breaking below that structure we'll see prices breaking below the structure and breaking back above that structure so what we've then done is we've dropped down onto our h4 and coming towards our important support area an area where we expect some bullish price action from what do we see we see markets descending so we are seeing a descending structure towards our higher time frame support area over there. If we isolate the structure and we identify how many touches we have in the structure, what we will see is that we have a multi-touch structure. So support there, resistance there, support there, resistance there. Once we have our two support areas, we draw our support trend line. So we can see that we could have a first touch, second touch and a potential third touch over here. So we do understand that our probabilities on AUDCHF will come in when market gives us that third touch of structure and that potential entry in the form of a impulse correction impulse or a reversal structure regardless of which type of entry the market will give us we know the directional bias that we have on aussie swiss franc we have a bullish bias and we're waiting for bullish price action to give us a reason to confirm our entry to enter this market in the direction that we would love to enter so on aussie swiss franc guys given all of the reasonings that we just spoke about we're going to go into next week looking for bullish bias setups we are going to be targeting first of all these structural highs over here and then we'll see how far aussie swiss franc can run with us so bullish bias over the course of next week for aussie swiss franc let's go on to the next pair guys we'll hop on to aussie jpy now on aussie yen let's just hop up onto the daily for a second what we will see from the daily is a market that has been in this ascending structure now we know that ascending structures normally break to the downside the move to the downside has come nice and impulsively showing us what showing us the direction that impulsive selling is taking place or rather we are seeing decisive selling taking place and indecisive buying because we are seeing the momentum it took way longer for the market to make this move from these price regions to these price regions here than it has to for this market to make this move from this price region down to this price region so we are definitely seeing a lot of sell side momentum now looking at things from a daily perspective guys what we can see is some support structures so we have previous support at this area here that was violated to the downside we also have previous support structure over there which is our important support area that the market first violated nice and impulsively so now we have a long-term outlook on momentum AUD JPY where do we want to align ourselves we want to align ourselves in the direction of this momentum so what does that mean for our trades that means that over the course of the following weeks guys we're going to be focusing on those sell biased setups what we're going to be looking for on AUD JPY is for AUD JPY to test previous resistance structures now we're just waiting for the network to pull through and then for our chart to load so that we can get into which previous resistance or previous support that has now turned into resistance will we be focusing on okay there we have our connection error let's just give it a second guys the network can be very faulty at times there we go beautiful our charts have loaded so guys on the h4 what we can see is a nice impulsive move to the downside with a lot of momentum we haven't we didn't even see a lot of pullbacks within this move to the downside showing us how heavily people are selling 
into JPY strength. Now, what we can do is align ourselves in the direction of this momentum. So what we'll be waiting for on AUD JPY is we will be waiting for those corrective structures. We have our impulse. What we need next is a corrective structure and something that allows us to enter in the direction of this sell side momentum. So whether that structure terminates at these support structures here that could now function as resistance or we pull into these resistance areas over here, we will be focused on our sell setups. So this is the optimal selling area that we're looking at. Why? Because this was the first some major support structures that were broken nice and impulsively to the downside. So these support structures will offer us the most probabilities for our resistance um, to function as that resistance and for those selling setups. So we're going to be focusing our eyes on just those sell setups for AUD JPY over the course of next week. Guys, it might require just a little bit of patience for us to wait for these corrective structures to actually form completely, though when they do form, we have the momentum guys we are going to be trading in the direction of this beautiful sell side momentum we will also have the confluence of having corrective structures that confirm the sell side momentum that we're looking to trade and we might also find that added reversal structure that gives us that high probability setup so that's what we're going to be looking for over the course of next week over the course of the following weeks on AUD JPY. obviously we'll adapt to the market structure if we find sufficient reason to be buying this market, then we might be opening ourselves to that as well because we are at major support structures. So we will still be focusing how does the market react to our support structures because we can see we got here impulsively. So if we are going to expect bullishness, that bullishness needs to occur in the form of a reversal structure. So we will still be reacting to how the market price develops within this area and then we'll make our further decisions. But going forward, we see the momentum, the, mem the momentum is on the sell side and we want to be involved in the direction of that momentum. So that's our analysis for AUD JPY guys. We'll go on to NZD CAD. Now on NZD CAD, guys, let's hop on to the daily just for a second. Now on the daily, what we will realize here is that market is at some important support areas. So if I just take a horizontal ray there and I slap that on over there, what we will see is that the market is at an important support structural area. So let's go to our most recent price action and just observe the nature of the structures that we are seeing here what we do see is a descending structure and this descending structure there's one important characteristic that we need to mention about this descending structure is that it is descending in a corrective manner because we do have important support structural areas that have been violated to the downside and we see prices breaking and closing back above these structural areas once again we have that important support structural area and we'll go and see this in nicely down on a lower time frame what has happened in the most recent price action but nonetheless on the daily guys we are in a descending structure a corrective descending structure now let's go down onto the h4 we've already identified our major structural highs and lows on the daily and we've obviously plot our support and resistance trend lines so that we are aware of the structure that we are trading in i think the network has disappeared on us once again let's just give it a second just for our charts to load i apologize about this guys i have no idea why the network is playing up with us today but there we go our charts have loaded so we are on the h4 here we have identified our descending structure and what we can do is further begin to isolate our patterns so what we will see here is a market that has first of all created equal lows and then we see these equal lows being taken out there if we look at the nature of the move in preparation to take out these equal lows here we do see descending corrective price 
action. Now we are isolating our structures. So what we've done is we've taken into account our two most recent lows and we do have some sort of a support that we could be working off over the course of next week, given the fact that we are in a higher time frame corrective structure towards important support areas and further isolating structure shows us corrective price action to these important higher time frame support structures warrants us to be looking for bullish price action from these areas here. So how we will be approaching uh, NZDCAD over the course of next week, guys, is we're going to be paying attention to these lows here that were created. So obviously we spoke about these lows here being violated to the downside and prices breaking and closing back above. So obviously indicating to us a corrective nature. So what we're going to be waiting at is either for this corrective structure to either form in the form of a reversal that might just take us up from these areas here, whether it's a reversal in form of a head and shoulders or maybe even a double bottom structure for that move to the upside or guys we will be looking to see further deceleration of this market giving us nicer finer structures to be able to isolate in this area that will give us the setups that we're looking for we know the direction that we're looking to trade and we know that we need to be looking for patterns and structures that support the directional bias that we would like to hold on nzd cad so nzd cad guys because of the reasons that we just mentioned, higher time frame support, higher time frame descending structure, we see smaller time frame structures also descending to important higher time frame support areas. Over the course of next week, we're going to be looking for these bullish bias setups and we're going to be bullish bias over the course of next week, hoping to take um, these bullish or any bullish momentum that might come, of, come out of NZD CAD. First of all, to these structural highs here, and then later on looking to see if we can ride this move all the way to these important areas here. So if we do manage to find that buy entry from these lows here, first of all, we'll be looking to obviously partial out at important areas, but I'm hoping to take this trade all the way to those key resistance areas up here. So these will be my final take profit areas in this market just because of the validation and I see some sort of a triple top within this area or whatever, but a lot of resistance within this area here. So if we do get nice momentum to the upside, that is probably Probably the next area where we will see a larger corrective structure begin to form from. So that's kind of the bias. We're looking for that upside right now. And then considering how the markets get to this resistance, we'll be deciding whether we should be looking for those selling opportunities to continue in the direction of the momentum that we've seen earlier on during the year. And or rather if we should be preparing for some continuation to the upside maybe this larger time frame trend has been changed and now we should be potentially seeing some violations of previous extreme structural areas so nonetheless guys we're going to align ourselves on the bullish side of things hoping to see that bullish bias price action to be involved in this next buying momentum so that's the analysis for nzt cad let's go on to usd czar and on usd czar guys let's jump on to the daily now on the daily guys an important 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 thing to note so we do have some previous these are also weekly structural areas what we did mention once a while ago was these equal low structures over here and we knew that higher time frame structure has been correcting to the downside and if price wants to make that move to the upside where are the stops sitting below these equal structural lows so we knew that the market wanted to make this move into this area here to clear stops before we saw our upside now looking at the most recent price action on the daily the important piece of um i guess information that we need going into usd czar is that our daily trend that had been holding to the downside has been violated so if we slap on a trend line to get an idea of what type of a trend had been holding on the daily there we go we have our trend line we see that that trend has been violated nice and impulsively we also have previous structural highs within these areas here that have been broken and closed above so we see clearly 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 that people are interested or at least there are buyers interested in 
buying USD ZAR and we would like to align ourselves in the direction of this new momentum that we are looking at. So because we see this new momentum pushing to the upside, what we're expecting from this point on are higher lows. So what we will be looking at are previous structural support areas that have been broken to the downside, like these important higher time frame support structures that we do see over here. Obviously, because we see prices breaking below these structural areas and breaking and closing back above, we understand or we can derive that this was a manipulation below structural areas obviously convincing sellers to jump in on the breakout to the downside and stopping out any buyers that had stops that rested below those previous swing lows so that's the nature of this price action that's the understanding that we can derive from prices breaking and closing below a level of structure and breaking back above so what we'll be waiting for from this point on guys is our continuation structure we have our direction we know which direction we're looking to trade all we need is a reason to get in on the momentum so what we'll be looking at is for prices to test previous important support structural areas then give us our reversal structures we'll also have the confluence of a descending structure towards our important support area once we see this entry criteria being met we are in for the buys guys so we want to be in for those that higher time frame momentum that we might be seeing coming in um, to the upside and this is or these are the kind of setups that we will be looking for on USD ZAR guys We're going to be bullish going into next week looking for that bullish bias price action Just waiting on a reason to jump into this market now That is our analysis for the week guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the analysis Hopefully you got the most out of it if you guys have received the value that was intended for you within this analysis session Definitely do give this video a like otherwise guys. Let me know in the comments what topics you would like me to go over in our future videos otherwise this is Tremaine your FX Chasers mentor I will see you guys in the future videos if you have not subscribed to the channel definitely subscribe after this video I would appreciate it everyone else would too Tremaine your FX Chasers mentor see you guys later cheers